Hey, we're here with Tony Rollin today in Augusta, Georgia at the John Deere Commercial Products. Yes. Is that what it's called? Yes, John Deere Commercial Products. I would call it the compact tractor factory. <laughs> that's what I would call it. Well, that's what this one is. The factory you're seeing today is a compact utility tractor. Okay. Okay. And that's like the one through fours, right? That's the one through four series. What's your role? So I'm the factory manager here and I have responsibility for the entire campus. Yeah. That sounds like big cheese. No, me. no. Just the leader. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the important people assemble our products and, and help us here. So, so I, you, I'm just the overseer. You've got a you've got a bunch of a bunch of things lined up for us today. What are we going to get to see? Oh, good question. So today you're going to get a chance to see our full operations of our one through four series tractors. Okay. Okay. Uh, here in this factory where we assemble, you'll get a chance to interact with some of our employees, right, to get a better understanding of what they do and the value that they add to our. Uh, manufacturing process here in our in our products. But hold it, I I I keep hearing on the internet that that the one through four series and all the deer compact tractors they're made in China or India or Korea or something. Well I know that's what you hear but today you're gonna get a chance to see that we fully assemble hundred percent of our product here in this cut factory. Let's take a look. All right let's do that. So this is the beginning of our one and two series line here. Okay. First we get, we get the components on the AGV. So you can see the assembly tech there picking up that transmission. Yeah. Uh, that transmission we get uh, right out of South Carolina. So oh, just really? a few so hours the, away from our factory. The transmission was made, manufactured in the USA? Yes, and actually the, the front axles are as well from the same manufacturer. Yeah, so here now our technician is finished with the subassembly of the rear axle. So he's gonna pick that up and bring that over to the AGV. What's an AGV? An automatic guided vehicle. Oh, that's cool. That's the yellow thing you see there that, that takes the tractor from station to station as we complete the work. So we got three pieces right here. It's just like Lego blocks. I love Legos. You like I Legos? I love Legos too, yeah. I always wanted a John Deere tractor built out of Legos. Lego set, yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, so here you can see they're starting to mate the transmission with the frame. And so they'll put those bolts in there and run them down. And then they'll be torqued with a torque control tool later on in our process. Okay. Okay, so here we are with the frame attached. I can even see in the top of the gearbox there. So now the rock shaft's on it. You can see the HST pedals are on there now. We're adding hydraulic lines, we're adding brackets. Now that would have been an oil line up to the uh, hydraulic oil cooler, I bet. Yes. And that's something unique for a subcompact. Most subcompact tractors do not have oil coolers. See there on the right, starting to put on the mid mower lift system. Yeah, so now you can see the engines on the yeah. chassis here. Now tell me a little about the engine. Where, where is it sourced? So the engine we do source from Yanmar out of Japan. Mm -hmm. We've worked very closely with them to develop these specs and design these engines specific for our product. Okay, and you've been working with Yanmar for, I don't know, 40 years probably. A long time, yeah, right? decades. And this partnership is really deep. This is not just a case of where you've went out and chosen an engine out of a book and hoped that it was the right one. No, no. We, we work very closely with them to design the engine and the tractor together. I just don't hear of reliability issues with these no. tractors. I mean, the, the, the engines are so reliable. Yep, that's right. Yeah, so now the consoles come in. And again, we have a sub area off to the side of this, this line where we get the individual components of the console, build them all up into a sub assembly and then drop it on the chassis. So what are we seeing here? Yeah, so this is one of our, our DC torque tools. Okay. Uh, so we use these tools anywhere we have uh, major structural joints or critical joints, such as joining the transmission to the frame in this case. Mm -hmm. And we do that so that we can have very precise controls over torque and angle. So we saw the lady use just a regular impact wrench early in the assembly process, but now we're going to go back and retorque those? Yes. Yeah, you'll see that in a lot of steps where we'll, we'll just use a regular battery or impact tool to run down the, the hardware, but then we always follow those up with a, a torque control tool. And this graph here, it shows the torque on a given... The torque versus angle. As you rotate that piece of hardware and the angle increases, that's how you see your torque increase and that's what's getting you the clamp load and holding that joint together. That and was, again, yeah. we, we have very precise controls over these. Um, we set up upper and lower control limits. We follow them up with random breakaway audits to make sure that nothing in the tool would have malfunctioned. We have very strict guidelines on how often we calibrate these tools and double check these tools to make sure that we know everything's always going to be right with these tractors. And it doesn't ratchet. Like a, a, an air impact wrench, it doesn't have that ratchet. No, it's, it's direct drive, direct continuous motion. So you see there, he switched his socket there from the, the smaller piece of hardware to the large. You know, you look on our, our one series and you see those large bolts going into the side of the transmission and you think that's all you would need, but those M12s there, we also consider those as key because they're still holding it to the frame. Okay. Our engineers have done some 
very precise measurements to understand how much clamp load they need to hold that joint together. Where do these frames come from? So these frames are actually manufactured by one of our sister factories in Wisconsin. Okay, a, a deer plant. Yes, a deer facility. They have a large metal fab operation there, and so we were able to uh, design this with them, and then uh, they are our supplier to this day. They've been building that frame since the start of the 1 Series. Wow. Oh, it looks like the ROPS comes in as a separate part. Where does that come from? The ROPS comes from our manufacturing plant in Mexico. It oh. is a John Deere facility. Okay. It's a good shot of Darnell there, <laughs> a business unit manager. Now, I wonder why they have the lights flashing this at, at this early stage. So this is when we first connect the battery. We first have that power to the unit. Uh, it's right after the ROPS stage there, so they're checking that those lights are functioning properly in case they see any issues. They can communicate it back right away and get it corrected right away on the line. Okay, that makes sense because uh, those wires running up the ROPS and all, it'd be easiest to deal with them right now. Exactly, before we continue to build up and, and, and cover those up with uh, additional parts. It's hard to notice as you do it, but um, we have inline inspections like that all throughout our process to verify the work as soon after it's been completed as possible. Fenders, hoods, seats. Yep. Fuel tanks on, you can see they're getting ready to fill it with fluid for the first time. That's so they've, they've, they've finished all the hydraulic connections. So this is our run-in station for our one series tractors. They're firing it up. You have uh, the one woman there on the front. She's gonna be adjusting the throttle lever linkages there to make sure that we have the right RPMs at min and max throttle. See the technician's up on the tractor checking his light function. He's gonna be checking his uh, rock shaft. This other one started at the same time, so I got distracted. Yeah. Yeah, so we actually fired up for the first time at this previous station. One thing I noticed is the very first time it's fired up, Within three or four seconds, they go to full throttle. Yes, that's right. A lot of our we, viewers we are very right nervous about about starting a, an engine and letting it go to full throttle. Well, all of these engines, you got to keep in mind, have been they have been run in at Yanmar's facility as well. Okay. They all run across test benches, so they are you know they're, they're primed and ready to go, and there's no need for a break in on them. So you see now he's doing some brake bog checks. So he's doing two things here. One, he is uh, putting the hydraulic system in relief on both the steering and his mid SCV. So we're making sure that we're working any air through the system. Now I think he's just pretending, you know, just like we did he's as kids, right? Drive. He's pretending yeah. to drive. Yep. No, no, there's, there's a reason for that. Something else he was doing there, you can hear it in the engine where he was holding the brake down and then pressing both his forward and reverse. And he does that in both high and low gear. And what we're looking for is a certain amount of drawdown in the RPMs because we want to make sure that those brakes are set correctly. Now we'll revalidate this again later on in the drive audit, but we want to do it here while the tractor's still on the line when it's easier to adjust before you get those tires on. Hey, it looks like a tractor here. She paints the stripes on there in the same direction. Once the final torque is applied, those stripes won't line up anymore. So it's easy to verify that the lugs were actually torqued. You know what's cool about those is she has, uh, she has this five volt pattern, right? But what's great about these tools because they measure torque and angle, I could tell if she hits the same one twice. So we have uh, mistake proofing on there that says, hey, because if I already torqued it, when it goes up the torque, it's not going to move again, right? Yep, now we're off the end of the line. It's looking more complete. So this is right in front of our loader install station starting to put the brush guard on. And then here's where we install the loader. And these loaders again are manufactured by John Deere at our uh, assembly plant in Mexico. All of the metal fab work, all of the cylinders and the final assembly of the loader is all done by John Deere. So design all the way through the manufacturing process is ours. Boy, that was quick and easy. Yeah, with those uh, quick attach loaders, it, it makes it easy. The operator's manual in and gets ready to connect the lines. So now we're outside. So this is our bump tractor. We do 100% drive on it on our tractors. Uh, you can see we take them through, grab them over a few bumps to shake them down. We have a park brake ramp there in the back so we can verify the MFWD and the park brake function. Uh, then they bring them up here where they also check uh, some additional functions on the loader, the rock shaft, the mid PTO if it has one, rear PTO, Rio switch, all that. And then uh, and she's giving that one series a ride. Yeah, so we're, we're really trying to shake them down to shake anything loose that might not have been done just right on the assembly. Yeah, so then following this test, you can see here she again is checking for extended rollout or making sure that that HST is returning to neutral properly. Uh, then she'll take it off. She'll she'll finish doing all of her loader checks and functional checks on this unit, and then she'll take it back inside where she'll perform a black light check. Uh, check all the electrical functions again to see if anything did come loose or come Hold on, hold on, a black light check. We checked in here, up on here, just in case. So we won't have nothing on the drive shaft. We go up under here, see? This little residue here. I normally wipe just to make sure it was just residue. Come around this fin. 
If you see any lines, we definitely want to go around the ceilings to make sure everything is sealed properly. Over here, definitely with the hydraulic lines as well. Go around here where the axle feeding is. And I always do a wipe down just to make sure it's um, just residue and nothing coming from the tractor. We come around here, check up here. And we don't see excessive running, then we can say that's a good tractor. And then I have a shiny light to check for any loose hardware. The touchy filly. Make sure all of it's tight. And this light illuminates any small nuts we might miss. Checking, make sure the wire harness is connected properly. And do to both sides. So here you can just see where, where when we get these tractors off the drive track, checking the diff lock function. You know, we like to do that on the gravel so we don't tear up the tires. And then also uh, verifying that the turning radius is right. We don't find anything wrong when we deadhead that steering. And after this is when they'll go inside for the, the full inspection. Hello, Tim. Hi, Pat. How are you? It's nice to meet you. Good to meet you. OK, well, what do you do for the company? So I have responsibility for the logistics organization inbound and outbound freight uh, for John Deere Grove Town. What does that mean? So you guys can see a uh, sea of green of tractors behind me. So during the day, the factory is, is shoveling tractors down to what we call the RDC. Uh -huh. which is a regional distribution center, what you see behind here. And you can see our trucks here, and that's where yeah. we load our tractors. Okay. We have them staged in staging lanes, and as uh, staging lanes become full, the loads get released to carriers. Uh, we ship on an open deck truck, which you see here. We ship on van trailers, and we also ship on containers. From why a van trailer for some, an open trailer for okay, some? Okay, so some tractors are too large to put in a van, Okay. and so they have to go on open deck. A lot of our tractors are will call tractors, which means the dealers bring their own trucks in to do that loading, okay. and a lot of them have open deck versus van trailers. So most of these trucks are going directly to a dealership? All somewhere. of them are going directly to a dealership, yes. Okay, so I should just follow one so I can choose which tractor I want? Well, you Is can, that... they're all for sale. <laughs> we, we saw do. across the street some things going overseas. Yeah, so they're going overseas to dealers overseas as well. Yep. Okay. So not only domestically, but also export. Okay, that was package. the shipping container. That's the containers. We're not loading any right now, but if you come here in the morning, you'll actually see, see containers being loaded on these same docks. Christy, I forgot to tell you, this load is the one coming to our house. Oh, no, no, no. That's the one you want. Well, we've seen a lot here today, and I've got one challenge remaining, and that's to try to figure out how to get this machine here into our checked luggage. I hope you guys have found this interesting. This has been incredibly enlightening to me. Many more. Uh, North American parts than I expected. Overall, just a just an incredible experience. Really appreciate the folks at John Deere for allowing us to, to get this inside view. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Christy, I'm not even sure I can figure out if I do need this one. Quite unique, R2 tires, Bryce tires, those are rare.